Welcome back to my channel. I'm Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. How do you manage application settings? Things like connection strings, host names, API keys, and application specific settings like log levels. Well, there's things like configuration files, environment variables, and external configuration services. Let me sort through all the different options and different situations that you can be in so you can determine what the best option for you is because it really isn't a one size fits all. Thanks to Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. Now, it's typical to include your configuration with your actual deployment artifact. I mean, when you go through your deployment process, whether it actually be your configuration is physically in code, whether it's compiled or not, or if it's some separate JSON file that lives with your code that at startup, it reads that file. This is pretty typical of just having your deployment pipeline and your configuration with your application as it's deployed. Now there's three things to point out here, and they may not actually be issues to you in your context. The first is having multiple environments. So you're gonna have a production environment. Let's say you have a staging environment and a development environment. How do you manage all the configuration, which is gonna be likely different because connection strings are different, et cetera, for these different environments. Speaking of connection strings, the second point here are secrets and sensitive information that you don't want in actual code or config files in source control. That's problematic. That's why things like configuration services, which I'll be talking about, um, are popular. And then lastly, if you have this need is because you're making this deployment and that's when at startup usually it reads the configuration or has it in code, is that if you wanna change values, as I mentioned at the very beginning, kind of like log levels, maybe you wanna flick a log level and change it to verbose for a really period of time. And you wanna do that dynamically without actually having to restart your application. When you're working in multiple environments, you need to tell your application at startup what type of environment it's in. Is it in production? And that's when you can use environment variables for this purpose. So I'm looking at a Docker Compose file. I can specify environment variables, say my app underscore env, and I can say it's production. So when our app starts up, it looks at that environment variable and figures out, okay, this is the environment I'm in, this is how I'm gonna load my configuration. This could be the same thing. There's different ways of doing this. I'm just illustrating here with an AWS ECS task. It's the same type of thing as you can define your environment. But, this goes back to what type of information do you wanna pass with these environment variables? As I was mentioning with a local file that's um, deployed with your application, you wanna be careful of sensitive information like connection strings with passwords, et cetera. So something like this really isn't feasible because you're gonna to have to generate that Docker file, that ECS task in one way, and then you're exposing this data in plain text. So it really is the same whether you have a configuration file or you want to use environment variables that really are defined in configuration files like the Docker Compose or an ECS task configuration. It's the same thing. You need to be very careful about what sensitive information you're putting in there. You want that to really be more static. Or if you want things to be more dynamic and you want to update them at runtime is another reason why you might not want to use a configuration file or an environment variable. And that's when you might wanna look at an external configuration service. So when your application starts up based on its environment, it can reach out to that configuration store and get something like the connection string so it can reach out to its database. So that sensitive data of that connection string isn't in a local configuration file, it's not an environment variable, it's in a secured configuration service. And how this applies to that dynamic data is that your application, not just that startup, but on some interval, could pull that configuration service to get updated values if something changed. Whatever that interval may be, that's context specific. And depending on the tooling you're using, you might not have to pull, it might be able to push that data to you if a value changes. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you know now the next question should be, well, what about availability? When my application starts up, what happens if this configuration store is unavailable for whatever reason, networking reasons? I need to be able to actually start the application up. Well, what you need is to have some local cache copy of what the last known good configuration was. So that means that you can reach out to that cache copy if the config store is down and then still be able to operate like normal. Now, how this works is if obviously if you have multiple instances running, they will just get when it is available, that configuration is that's when you store it. And then that way you can just use it as need be. If you have other instances, they would just be sharing that cache copy. As the example, if you're using like something like um, in AWS, you could be using EFS, so that each instance could be using that shared copy and writing to it when changes occur. So that way if at any point there's 
your configuration store is unavailable, your applications, if they restarted or you needed new instances to start up, they wouldn't necessarily need the configuration store to be available. They'll have a cache copy of the last known working copy. I mentioned at the very beginning, there really is no one size fits all. There's different needs depending on your context. There's nothing wrong with having configuration files that are deployed with your application. There's nothing wrong with that, assuming that those values are fairly static and you don't need to dynamically update them. As well as there's no sensitive data in there that you might not want to have in source code because if it's a built part of it, that as long as that information is kept secret. One way to do that is to be using a configuration store for those secrets or for the dynamic data. Where you want to use environment variables are very similar to where you'd want to use local configuration files. It may be simplified where you have your local configuration file as one thing, it gets deployed with your app, and you're just using the environment variable, a single one, to tell it which configuration to load. But if there's still kind of the same thing where you don't want dynamic data or things like sensitive data to be in those configuration files or in your environment variable. If you're going to be using a store, you need to be thinking about availability. This has happened to me where it's not available. And then what do you do? You need to be able to your application to start up. If things need to start up because you need to scale or they're restarting for whatever reason and they can't restart in say your cloud environment, that's a problem. That's why you need to have some type of fallback to a local cache copy of the last functioning version of that configuration. Another thing I want to point out with kind of the dynamic settings that you may want to update at runtime so you're pulling the store to get that value. The thing is with that is if that were static within a configuration file or environment variable and that was fine, it wasn't sensitive, it's why do you need it to be that quick via polling or the store? Can you actually build your application that fast? I'm not saying depending on what your situation is, but if you can make that change in code, build your app, go through the whole pipeline, and that's very fast, then you don't really even need to think about that being in a store and something that needs to be dynamic and updated at during runtime. So the reasons why you think about using a configuration service are because you really do need dynamic override at runtime. You had shared configuration between apps. If you have multiple different apps that share some type of configuration in multiple instances. And of course, probably the most Important of them is you have secrets and sensitive data. Now, some of the trade-offs and downsides is that you can have startup failures, like I mentioned. If you are gonna be doing dynamic changes at runtime, how are you dealing with those push-pull of getting that data? And if you are doing it, realize that making a configuration change at runtime that it loads, you need to be very kind of cautious about what you're actually doing there, because that could bring your system in a bad state depending on what that configuration change is. And lastly, it's debugging. It's really difficult if you're getting all your data from a configuration store, especially if it's in production, you don't really have the same type of access to invisibility into what's actually loaded. So another thing to consider. It isn't a one size fits all, and you may actually use all three, configuration files, environment variables, and a configuration service. Why? Because they all have different use cases. You don't need to use one or the other. You can use a combination of what fits appropriately in your context. If you enjoy topics like this and you want to chat with other software developers about software architecture and design and things you're building, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. There's over 300 members now. There's a lot of discussion. It's really interesting. Check the links in the description on how you can join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.